that's pretty interesting, you know? If we are over complete, if, if we have more data, then we have dimensions and we span all the dimensions of it. Linear regression is well defined. We can solve it with matrix inversion. We can solve it with gradient descent, but the solution will be the same. But if we have less data, if we don't have enough data for that, the answer is undefined and it will actually throw us an error depending on the implementation. But in most implementations, it will throw us an error. So in a way, how we solve that problem. Now, like the mean squared error, we can still make it to go small. It's just that there's no longer one solution. All of a sudden, there's lots of solutions to that. And there is a way of thinking a little more precisely about such problems. We're looking at ill-conditioned problems. And there's the notion of condition number that that, that quantifies how hard and how undefined a problem is. So let's look at an application of that. Let's say we want to solve for AX is B, which is just linear regression here. Now the condition number is defined as the limit of epsilon as we make it small of the largest value that we can have in that area of the ratio of the change in f, not like we let's say we have a ring here, we have a value here in the middle. We're looking at within that what's the what's the steepest area within that? No, and of course, like it becomes well defined as we make it really small, but effectively we're asking what is the direction in which we could change x most. So uh, we could change x so that f changes most. So we're actually asking like, what is like the dimension where this is most fragile and where we have most effect? Now, our intuitions are really good in low dimensions. Our intuition is really bad in high dimensions. And you can play with this concept of condition numbers and we will often find that it surprises us. So when it comes to this linear equation, we understand that very well. What is the condition number? It's the largest singular value of the matrix A divided by the smallest singular value. How can we understand that? Well, there's going to be some dimensions where the effect of moving in that dimension is really big and other dimensions where it's really small. And um, in that sense, this is a measure of how difficult our problem is. And it's actually a measure that is applicable very, very widely, which is we're effectively asking how small changes in the x that can just happen by noise produce changes in f here. And um, in, in, in this notion applies very broadly to solving inverse problems, and in this case, to solving deep learning problems. And deep learning is really weird in lots of ways here. In, lots of, in many cases, we have more parameters than data. So what does that mean? Say, if we build a big system solving computer vision problems, we might have millions of parameters. Or for some text problems, we might have billions of parameters. And at the same time, we usually don't have millions of data points. And even if we do, the data points tend to lie in relatively low dimensional manifolds, which means that the condition number of it is really bad. It will be infinity, or at least very close to infinity. In lots of cases, we're generally over-parameterized. So regression generally depends on how we solve this problem. So the dynamics of learning all of a sudden matters. And realizing this, that in a way we have this degree of, of freedom here, that, that like there's not one solution for us, is the key to understanding deep learning successes. It's also the key for regularization, about which we will learn a lot during week five. So, uh, this is why we should really worry about the dynamics of linear deep learning. The algorithm that we use for optimization matters, behavior may be non-trivial. So what, how does that affect convergence? 
how do learning curves look in like in these cases? Why don't you give it a little bit of a try?